Uh, behind uh, Carson's Pro Wrestling World is where the original Wrestle Factory, not you know, only where we trained, but also where the first set of live events took place. You know, buds. You know, That's buds. Right. Sure. So here you're seeing it, two debutantes. It's Mr. Zero and Dragonfly, two of the first five trainees at the Wrestle Factory, locking up one-on-one -on -one here in the opening contest. The referee, of course, is Mike Allrad, uh, because, Bryce, you were still in training at this time, this correct? true. I had... Uh, showed up just to be a imposing security force. I got a phone call that afternoon to bring a suit because I was going to be ring announcing. So I had to call my dad and reroute him on the long road from Hershey to Allentown and there, there I was in a way too big suit. And there's Mike Allrad wearing white socks. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, the, the debut match in Jakar history as well is, as you said, these two gentlemen's debut wrestling match. So no, no pressure, no big deal. That's but right. that's the best that ring has ever looked, I think. <laughs> that is probably true. It was That, that ring, of course, uh, set at a, a pony height, as we refer to it, when it's 18 inches off the ground, was actually constructed for us by 911 of yes. ECW fame or, or infamy, depending on your take. Not, not of emergency call fame. They don't, they don't do ring. I don't think so. Uh, that had been delivered to us, of course, about five months prior, in, in the month of January, and that's where it stayed uh, back there. Now, of course, the Wrestle Factory, as you remember, Bryce, underwent a lot of renovations leading up mm -hmm. to this particular event. There was a wall uh, that we we removed, Chikara removed. Yes. The students, we all did it, like with sledgehammers. We broke down this drywall, opening up a much bigger space. We painted the room black. Um, you can see there off on the left-hand side of the screen a window which leads into one of two dressing rooms that were backstage. Which there were the humongous, <laughs> those two dressing rooms. <laughs> we, stacked, uh, we were stacked on top of each other in the back there. Uh -huh. um, I think the way it worked, was there, was the, the, there was the one dressing room where Reckless was and then the other one for the rest of us. Yes. Um, yes. That's how that worked. Covered by posters, you can see there. So, mm -hmm. as, and there's also all the rest of the guys peeking through the uh, sides of the posters. Absolutely. Uh, watching the matches. This is why there were only five matches. There's no room for everyone. There, was, there were these shows. Shows. I mean, now at Chikara Show, probably, what, 35, 40 guys in the locker mm -hmm. room on the show. These are these are 10 or 12-man operations, uh, very, very, very bare bones. That's right. I mean, you say, no, you know, no one gets rich in any wrestling, but, oh, boy, on, on these days, that was even more so true, I believe. And that the dragon painted around the uh, siren lights, that was also done by the students, the entranceway you saw. That's right. Yeah, the original sketch uh, that was done there for the entranceway uh, was done by a friend of Love Bugs. Okay. He came in and drew that dragon. And when it was drawn there, oh, it looked so cool. Yeah. But then somehow, once it had been fully painted and you saw it fully realized, like with the the flashing light eyes, it was somehow not as cool as we'd originally thought. No. That was something. <laughs> that, 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 that red curtain actually made it with us for a while, I think. That was that red curtain that was in it. Oh, yeah. Went Emaeus to St. John's, went to Emaeus. Yeah, 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 That's sure. right. As well as this. How long did this ring last, Mike? This went to... Quite a while. You know... Um, 06? Yeah, eventually, uh, because we needed, of course, to um, buy a ring that was higher than this. The right. pony height rings are 18 inches off the floor. A traditional wrestling ring is 36 inches off the floor. We sold it to a group in Canada. Yes. Um, so, but... It was at least with us for six years yeah. that we had that, that ring that 911 built for us. Even, even in days that we were using the the other ring in Philadelphia, this ring still would go to Reading and mm -hmm. and Emmaus and Pittston or wherever else, I remember, for quite a while. Maybe yeah. not Pittston. There's another ring in Pittston. That's right. Yeah, we did. We had a we had a different ring arranged for us in Pittston, but it did travel with us yeah. and for I, quite a long time. I came across this this ring of like seeing an old friend in uh, Ottawa, Ontario, I believe, in uh, 2008. <laughs> I'd, hey, look, I, I know this ring. Put together many times. That's right. Broken and repaired yes, many, many yes. times. Yes, completely split boards, uh, yeah. broken cables. I believe 91 even autographed, if I remember correctly. One, one of the, the cross beams was autographed. What, by had, had 911 written on it, just in case you forget. Yeah. A lot of the uh, repairs, you know, back in the early days, as you said, it was a very small crew back mm -hmm. in the day because we had the five trainees besides Reckless and myself, and then a couple local guys as well helped fill out the roster. Among them, uh, the aforementioned Lovebug, his mm -hmm. partner, Marshall Law, who was. Really, the only guy we knew qualified to fix the ring. Yeah, yeah. So every time we broke something, we had to call Marshall to come and repair the ring. And then, of course, Blind Rage was the other who kind yep, of rounded yep, out the uh, yep. crew. That's how we found Mike Allred. Uh, Blind Rage knew an official, which, of course, we needed for... <laughs> right. Those are an important part of the events. That's right. Having a referee. You saw the, the coffee sipping there of Mr. Zero. That kind of became uh, that that I, Mr. Zero, the first breakout guy, I guess you'd say. Right. I mean, he, he was the first uh, guy to get some press and some reaction these days, I think, and that, that sort of stuff. The coffee, and I think forthcoming here, the reading of the business section of the Allentown Times mm -hmm. uh, was kind of what what made him stick out as a, as the as a as a character. Mm -hmm. 
Very much so. Yeah, uh, definitely of the original five, uh, all of whom you'll see uh, encapsulated here in this event. Mr. Zero was the first one to really get a little bit of name recognition. Mm -hmm. He was sort of uh, flavor of the month for, yeah. for a little while. And uh, you know, as we were talking about uh, in an interesting bit of trivia, there were a few permutations of Mr. Zero mm -hmm. over the years. Now, of course, one thing you no doubt notice here is the mask that he's wearing yeah. here in his debut mask, or match, I should say, is not the mask that he's most famous for. Um, because the uh, custom mask that had been ordered from him from High Spots, right. of course, didn't show up on time. Imagine that. Of course not. So, uh, the day of the event, he had to improvise because his mask wasn't there. Yep. Um, so, I, I think it boiled down to going to like a Halloween costume shop or yep. something like that. In the mall, the year-round, uh, this is May, this wasn't even Halloween time, but uh, yeah, the, the year-round costume shop at the mall. Yeah. And I don't even know what, <laughs> what, that goes, what costume that mask goes to. Right. <laughs> Uh, but that's what it was, and I can't imagine it was good time wrestling in that. No, and it was so, I'm sure you remember, it was so hot in that oh, back yeah. room because yeah. we couldn't we couldn't turn the air conditioning on. We got yelled at when we turned the air conditioning on by the powers that be. So it was sweltering. It's, you know, it's May 25th here. Sure. And he's a lot of people in a small room. Yes. A low ceiling. No that, ventilation. I think we started opening the garage eventually. That's behind the camera right. you're seeing now, but I think that mm -hmm. just... For we had some kind of relief. We just opened the garage, which led to neighborhood children just walking they would, in and watching right, they the would, show. They would crawl under. We would only leave it open a crack yep. to get some ventilation going. And the neighborhood kids learned this during the six-week run when we were doing the Fridays mm -hmm. Five Matches for Five Dollars promotion. And neighborhood kids would crawl under the open garage door. And as the show was going on, we're thinking, hey, it's starting to fill up out right. there. False. Nope. No. That's not really what was happening. Right. So. There's hey, look at that. Dragonfly with a victory roll. Just covered that the Tuesday previous. Well done. Yeah. He should have tucked his pants in. You see that there? Yeah, I saw that. The boxer briefs on Mr. Zero. We didn't cover that till month seven of training. <laughs> tucking in, tucking in the blue tights. Fixing yeah. the. Uh, someone took his coffee or spilled. His coffee spilled. I think. You're right. I remember that because the canvas stunk of that the f for a while. Yep, yep, yep. Definitely real coffee in there. Mr. Zero really was uh, playing it all the way. I do. Uh, right. Yeah. Pull it up. That's, that's certainly worth mentioning. Like they're. I think maybe after a few spills, maybe we decided, yeah, maybe. you know, maybe sitting on hot coffee in the ring was not such a hot idea right. after all. That uh, was one of many instances that canvas came across. <laughs> one of much later was a very bloody nose of Kid Cruel. Remember that? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Probably the worst uh, that this canvas in particular suffered was on the day of a, a new trainee uh, beginning. He was very, very nervous. I don't, I don't know if you were there for that, Bryce, but... Um, Prior to his first training session, he had only thought to consume pineapples and salsa. Nah. And he proceeded to uh, vomit them about midway through practice all over the canvas. Excellent. And for about two weeks, that back room, they smelled of pineapples. Like, it didn't have a vomit smell yep. to it. Yep. It just smelled of pineapples. And people think, oh, that's a nice scent. No. Nope. Not when you know the story. No. Nope. Not when vomit's involved. Now, these guys take him to the floor here. Oh. Into the ring post. A uh, pretty lively crowd here, actually, it's, uh, for a first show. Yeah, uh, definitely, you know, I guess we ran six events here before mm -hmm. uh, we ran into our issues with the zoning board that brought this to a screeching halt at the end of June. Um, this was the biggest. Uh, uh, second, of course, would have been the event where La Parca appeared. Yep. But uh, this, the debut event, drew the biggest in the, in the Wrestle Factory history. Yeah. I'd, I'd say, what, 125 people or so in a very small Maybe. room. Yeah, just eyeballing it. The bleachers were built too, right? That's right. That you're seeing across from the... Yeah, speaking about being a handy guy, uh, in the, the day, the same day as this event, uh, Martial Law built those bleachers. Uh, that same day we finished painting it, and uh, there was some other last bit. Like, we might have only just finished tearing down the wall just in time for the event. And of course, there were some uh, other independent wrestlers uh, who had been booked for the event, in particular, guys by the name of CM Punk, Chris Hero, and Colt Cabana, mm -hmm. the then Gold Bond Mafia. And uh, they came in on a very tiresome trip uh, from the Midwest, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember, the, <laughs> the, it's utter chaos. This is our first event, you yeah. know, we're, we're in nowhere close to being ready. And uh, Reckless came to me and he said, uh, Hey, uh, Mike, uh, the Midwest car is finally here, but they really need to go and eat, so I'm going to show them where there's a local restaurant before the event. And yeah. then Tom vanished for about two hours. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. It was <laughs> there, there, are, there are legendary stories as well as uh, uh, Tom and uh, the uh, Chikara company credit card in tow at the old uh, the Ham Fam up the street in Allentown. So that's cool, you know, no big deal. So a, whoa, crazy looking springboard bulldog <laughs> from Dragonfly. <laughs> In uh, the course of 2000, by the end of 2002, of course, if I'm not mistaken, Dragonfly had entered into semi-retirement. Yeah. He only wrestled, what do you think it was, four or five matches total before? I think that's about right. I don't, he even, oh, there's a... Blue Thunder Bomb. Bomb, yeah. Uh, even when a lot of the guys were playing out, and I know that Ultramantis, Icarus, mm -hmm. uh, Ichabod Slain, Hollow Kid went out to IWA this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, Dragonfly not was not on really those trips. I think he no, had, he had, had to take Zane Madrox in yeah, his place. Yeah, he had he had one foot in the door and one foot out the door pretty much right away. Yeah, he obviously uh, he had, certainly had a lot of potential, mm -hmm. and uh, which is not to say that potential went unrealized. But in the course of four to five matches, you know, a lot of these guys went on to have you know. Dozens and dozens, or if not hundreds and hundreds of matches over the course of their sure. career. Look at that. You can see very pretty nice. early on here, very he's nice. a very capable, very athletic guy. Even with the pulling away from the ropes there. At one count, that's all that gets. Uh, Dragonfly resurfaced as well in 2008, 2009. That's, yeah, he did as a matter of fact. Saw him in fact. Easton once and Reading once. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for a guy that had a, a six-year layoff, looked very capable, very impressive in those outings. Look at this here. The release <laughs> German suplex all the way over. Dragonfly uh, returned to wrestle Rorschach in in Reading. Rorschach, uh, I believe, was a sound guy this evening, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, an interesting bit of trivia. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm sure, not sure of that either. Yeah, he was in the third class. It was definitely a little That's wild. It. There you go. Last the last shaving unicorn drop. The calling card of Mr. Zero.